Today I'm discussing the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Working Group of the National Framework um, and its role in enhancing implementation of the five elements of the Child Placement Principle. The Working Group was established under the third action plan of the National Framework and is responsible for ensuring full implementation of all five elements of the Child Placement Principle across the National Framework. Membership of the group consists of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander leaders from across Australia and state chairs and provides a secretariat support to that working group. I've chosen this slide um, because it speaks to the challenge we face in relation to stemming the tide of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children entering out of home care and reconnecting our children who are already in the system to their families, communities and cultures. This is at the heart of what the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander working group is trying to achieve. So what is the child placement principle? The child placement principle recognises the importance of connections to family, community, culture and country in child and family welfare legislation, policy and practice and asserts that self-determining communities are central to supporting and maintaining these connections. It was founded on an intent of systemic change to counter embedded racism that causes stolen generations by explicitly recognising the value of culture and the vital role of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children, families and communities to participate in decisions about the safety and well-being of our children. The five elements of the Child Placement Principle span from a priority for prevention of harm and keeping families safely together to the right of connection to family, community, culture and country for children who need to live away from their parents for their safety and well-being. The partnership element reflects the importance of enabling the role of independent Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community controlled organisations in child protection decision making, drawing on their deep cultural knowledge and relationships, while the participation element recognises the rights of children and their families to participate in all child protection decisions that affect them. The placement element defines the hierarchy of preferred placement options with kin or Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander carers for children in out of home care. The working group has played a key role in advancing understanding and implementation of the five elements of the placement principle. Some of the key achievements and ongoing activities of the working group include securing an ongoing policy commitment from every, every state and territory to pursue and report annually on full implementation of the five elements. The reports are developed with input from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander ACOs and state and territory governments and we will continue to undertake this work annually. We are in process of developing enhanced national indicators aligned to the trial placement principle in partnership with the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare and state and territory governments. And the development of practice resources for child placement principle implementation, including understanding and applying the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Child Placement Principle and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Child Placement Principle, a guide to support implementation. There have also been significant strides towards improved implementation of the principle and in particular recognition of its five elements in numerous jurisdictions. One example is Queensland where the Child Protection Act now applies all five elements across the Act. There are pockets of significant reform occurring across the country. However, all jurisdictions require clear and strengthened commitments to support the full implementation of the Child Placement Principle. While the National Framework's focus on priorities for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children has improved in recent years, um, as has already been said, we have not seen a reduction in the number of our children entering care and overrepresentation continues to rise year by year. Having the working group sit outside the governance structure set up to implement actions related to our children within the fourth action plan has not worked as well as it could. In response, Snake and Family Matters have continued to call for a dedicated strategy for our children that is tailored to suit our communities and has greater Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community control leadership and government. These are some of the challenges that we will be focused on in the Beyond 2020 agenda and through the recently announced National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Early Childhood Strategy. In conclusion, SNAKE and the Working Group look forward to continuing to work collaboratively alongside states and territories, and the Commonwealth in particular, to fully embed the five domains of the Child Placement Principle within all strategies and actions under the Fourth Action Plan, as well as into the next phase 
of national child and family wellbeing policy. And that's all for me. <laughs>